Hello, I'm Alexis Hockenstead, a current gynecologic oncology fellow at the Mayo Clinic. Thank you for your interest in this mo module titled Opioid Titration and Conversion. This module was created on behalf of the Palliative Care Network of the Society of Gynecologic Oncology and the Gynecologic Oncology Fellows Research Network as part of a grant funded by the Foundation for Women's Cancers. Opioids are the first line treatment for cancer-related pain. As the only oncologists that provide both medical and surgical oncologic care, gynecologic oncologists encounter an exceptionally broad range of indications for prescribing opioids, from management of acute post-operative pain, to chronic cancer-related pain, to palliative end-of-life care. As GYN oncologists frequently utilize opioids to manage pain in our patients, it is important to have a strong understanding of the principles of opioid prescribing, including basic opioid conversion and dose adjustments. This module will focus on the details of opioid conversion. At the end of this presentation, learners will be able to identify a strategy for opioid conversion, articulate the steps involved in opioid conversion, and describe the phenomenon of cross-tolerance and indications for dose reductions during opioid conversion. There are several important steps to consider when planning to adjust the dosage or convert to a different opioid medication. Always perform a clinical evaluation to investigate the etiology of the new pain or the change in the patient's pain symptoms. It is important to rule out another cause that could be contributing to the change in symptoms and determine if additional tests or imaging is needed prior to adjusting the pain medications. Next, determine the amount of opioid that the patient is currently taking on a daily basis and convert both long and short acting opioids to oral morphine equivalents which we abbreviate as OME. Decide which opioid you will use by asking these questions. Is the current formulation working well for the patient? Have they developed intolerable side effects? Or is there a change in clinical status, such as the patient not tolerating oral intake? Then calculate the dosages of each medication using general rules and individualize those calculated doses as needed. Finally, try to anticipate the potential side effects and provide prophylaxis if available. We have delineated four basic rules for conversion. The first rule is to always convert to oral mor morphine equivalents. Second, if you are switching from one opioid to another, dose reduce the OME total by about 25% to account for incomplete cross tolerance. Rule three is to calculate the long acting dose, which is equivalent to about two thirds of the 24 hour OME. And rule four is to calculate the short-acting dose, which is approximately 10 to 15% of the 24-hour long-acting opioid dose. There are many opioid calculators and dose conversion tables online. However, it is important to have a basic knowledge of equi-analgesic doses of opioids. An equi-analgesic dose is defined as that dose at which two opioids at steady state provide approximately the same pain relief. Here is an example of a table of equi-analgesic dosing. In this kind of equi-analgesic table, all cells in the table are equivalent. For example, 10 milligrams of IV morphine is equivalent to 30 milligrams of oral morphine. An example of how to use this table to convert to OMEs, let's take a patient taking 40 milligrams of oxycodone. Since 20 milligrams of oxycodone is equivalent to 30 milligrams of oral morphine, Therefore, you can multiply the oxycodone dose by 1.5 to obtain the equivalent OMEs. In a patient taking 40 milligrams of oxycodone, 40 times 1.5 is equivalent to 60 OME. Here's another example. The table tells us that 7.5 milligrams of hydromorphone is equivalent to 30 milligrams of oral morphine. If a patient is taking 20 milligrams of oral hydromorphone daily, convert that to OME by multiplying by four. Therefore, 20 milligrams of oral hydromorphone is equivalent to 80 OME. Here are a couple easier rules of thumb to remember. The first is the one, two, three rule, which is that one milligram of IV morphine equals two milligrams of oral oxycodone equals three milligrams of oral morphine. Another rule is the 30, 20, 10, 7.5, 1.5 rule, which provides an easy to remember conversion between some of the more commonly utilized opioids, including oral and IV morphine and Dilaudid, as well as oral oxycodone. To add a layer of complexity, transdermal fentanyl conversions are a bit more tricky because the patches are dosed in micrograms per hour and are only available in certain doses. 
To convert from a fentanyl patch to OME, simply double the transdermal fentanyl dose in micrograms. This will be equal to your oral morphine equivalent in milligrams. It is also important to note that fentanyl dosed uh, transdermally reaches a therapeutic level in 13 to 24 hours. So when switching from a long-acting opioid to a fentanyl patch, the patch should be applied with the last dose of the long-acting oral opioid to avoid pain during the transition. When starting a patient on an oral opioid medication, the first opioid chosen is generally short-acting morphine or oxycodone to determine the required dosage as well as to ensure tolerance. Short-acting opioids can be converted to long-acting formulations dosed once or twice daily to both minimize breakthrough pain and decrease administration issues. Morphine is the most commonly used long-acting opioid due to ease of administration and cost, unless there is a contraindication such as renal failure or past intolerance. Other considerations include the route of administration. For example, women with intermittent bowel obstructions who are unable to tolerate oral intake may benefit from a transdermal fentanyl patch, which would allow more reliable absorption. Opioid rotation occurs when a patient is transitioned from one opioid to another. Rotating opioids is indicated when the patient is unable to achieve adequate pain control due to intolerable side effects that prohibit dose escalation. Another indication for opioid rotation is a change in clinical status, such as new onset renal insufficiency, or an inability to tolerate oral intake, which precludes the administration of the current medication. It is important to note that opioid rotation is not indicated in situations of inadequate pain control, where side effects are not prohibiting the uptitration of the current opioid. Opioid tolerance is defined as a decrease in pharmacologic response following repeated or prolonged administration. Cross tolerance refers to the development of tolerance to the effects of other structurally similar drugs in the same pharmacologic class after long-term exposure. Whatever tolerance a patient has developed to their current opioid may not translate to a different opioid, which is known as incomplete cross-tolerance. Therefore, when we switch a patient from one opioid to another, we reduce the total dose to account for the possibility of incomplete cross-tolerance. It is recommended to dose reduce by approximately 25% to avoid overdosing the new opioid. This reduction should be applied to the calculated 24-hour OME. Now that we've reviewed the principles of opioid conversion, let's apply this information to a few cases. For reference, remember these four basic rules as we work through each case. Rule number one, convert all opioids to 24-hour oral morphine equivalents. Rule number two, decrease 24-hour need by 25% to account for incomplete cross-tolerance when rotating opioids. Rule number three, two-thirds of your total 24-hour OME should be long-acting. And rule number four, 10 to 15% of your long-acting dose will be your short-acting dose, given every three hours on an as-needed basis. Our first case involves converting a PCA to oral opioid medications. We'll start with a 60-year-old patient with recurrent cervical cancer who presents to clinic with uncontrolled pain. She is tearful and rating her pain a 10 out of 10. After several boluses of IV morphine, the patient has appropriate pain control. You decide to admit the patient to the hospital to optimize her pain control for homegoing medications. You perform a full evaluation of causes of pain and an appropriate pain assessment. Then, after 48 hours, her pain is well controlled. She has used a total of 100 milligrams of IV morphine in 24 hours. Now we will convert this IV usage to a homegoing oral medication regimen. Starting with rule number one, we will convert the IV morphine to OME. 10 milligrams of IV morphine equals 30 milligrams of oral morphine. Therefore, 100 milligrams of IV morphine is equal to 300 milligrams of oral morphine. For rule number two, the adjustments for cross tolerance when switching opioids will be admitted in this circumstance as morphine will remain our opioid of choice. We then move to rule number three to calculate the dose of long acting opioid which will be two-thirds of the 24-hour OME calculated above. In this example, two-thirds of 300 OME is equivalent to 200 milligrams of oral morphine. As there are no contraindications, we would use divided doses of long-acting morphine, 
which is 100 milligrams of MS Contin administered twice daily. Finally, rule number four states that the short-acting dosage should equal 10 to 15% of the total 24-hour long-acting dose. Therefore, 10 to 15% of 200 milligrams is 20 to 30 milligrams of oral morphine. As immediate release morphine is available in 15 and 30 milligram tablets, our short acting dose will be 15 to 30 milligrams of oral morphine every three hours as needed for breakthrough pain. Case two will work through an example of starting a long acting opioid on a patient currently taking short acting opioid medications. This patient is a 55 year old with stage 3B cervical cancer. She recently had a ureteral stent placed due to hydronephrosis and is currently undergoing treatment with chemoradiation. She presents to your clinic with pelvic and back pain. She is currently taking an average of 80 milligrams of oxycodone per day, which is providing moderate control of her pain. She is tired of taking the medication so frequently and is waking up at night to take pain medication. You decide to transition her to a long-acting opioid. So going through our rules, first we will calculate the 24-hour OME. We start with 20 milligrams of oxycodone, which is equivalent to 30 milligrams of oral morphine. So for this patient, she's taking 80 milligrams of oxycodone in 24 hours, which is equal to 120 OME. For rule two, we'll then adjust for complete incomplete cross-tolerance as we plan to convert from oxycodone to morphine. We will reduce the total OME by 25%, so 25% of 120 OME is equal to 90 OME for the 24 hours. For rule number three, we'll calculate the long-acting opioid dose, which is two-thirds of the 24-hour OME. In this example, two-thirds of 90 OME is 60. Therefore, we would prescribe long-acting morphine in the form of MS Contin 30 milligram tabs twice daily. And finally, for rule number four, the short acting dose is equal to 10 to 15% of the total 24 hour long acting dose. In this example, 10 to 15% of 60 milligrams is equal to six to nine milligrams. As immediate release morphine is available in 15 milligram tablets, we would prescribe one half tablet of morphine or 7.5 milligrams per dose every three hours as needed. Case three will work through the concept of rotating opioids. For this example, we'll use a patient who is a 55-year-old woman with recurrent sarcoma who returns to your clinic 10 days after previous escalation in her opioid medications. She notes that she has been quite somnolent and nauseated. However, her pain is now well controlled. She is currently taking long-acting opioids in the form of MS Contin 100 milligrams three times per day and 45 milligrams of immediate release morphine an average of five times per day. Although her pain is well controlled, her side effect profile is negatively affecting her quality of life. For that reason, we will rotate her opioid medication from morphine to oxycodone. We will again start with rule number one and convert her total opioid use into OME. As 100 milligrams of MS Contin TID equals 300 OME, and five daily doses of 45 milligrams of immediate release morphine equals 225 OME. She's using a total of 525 OME in a 24 hour period. Using rule number two, we will then adjust for incomplete cross tolerance by decreasing the OME total by 25%. In this example, 525 OME reduced by 25% is equal to 394 OME. We'll plan to use oxycodone and its long-acting equivalent oxycontin. For this conversion, we'll use 30 milligrams of morphine, which is equivalent to 20 milligrams of oxycodone. And therefore, 394 OME equals 263 milligrams of oxycodone. Rule number three states that the long-acting dose is equivalent to two-thirds of the 24-hour OME total. For this patient, two-thirds of 263 milligrams is equal to 175 milligrams. For convenient dosing, we will use 160 milligrams of OxyContin in divided doses, which will be 80 milligrams of OxyContin twice per day. Finally, rule number four states that 10 to 15% of this long-acting dose will be used for short-acting 
intermittent dosing. 10 to 15% of 175 milligrams equals 17.5 to 26 milligrams of oxycodone. For ease of dosing with the available oxycodone tablets, we will plan to use 20 milligrams of oxycodone every three hours as needed for breakthrough pain. For case number four, let's consider the same patient as above. She is now placed on hospice and is unable to take oral medications. Her pain is currently well controlled with Oxycontin 80 milligrams twice daily with an average of three doses of Oxycodone 20 milligrams used per day. As she is unable to tolerate oral medications, we will rotate her opioids to transdermal fentanyl and an oxycodone suspension for short-acting medication. For rule one, the total OME used in 24 hours is calculated. She is currently using oxycontin 80 milligrams twice per day, which equals 160 milligrams of oxycontin total and 20 milligrams of oxycodone three times per day to equal 60 milligrams of oxycodone for a total of 220 milligrams of oxycodone in a 24 hour period. Using the transition of 20 milligrams of oxycodone equaling 30 milligrams of oral morphine, the 220 milligrams of oxycodone is equ equivalent to 330 OME. For rule number two, we will decrease the 24 hour OME by 20 per 25% to account for incomplete cross tolerance as we are rotating opioids. For this case, 25, a 25% reduction of 330 OME leaves us with 248 OME. For rule number three, our long acting opioid dose will be equal to two thirds of the 24 hour total OME. Two thirds of 248 OME equals 165 OME. For the transdermal fentanyl patch, remember, that the dose of the fentanyl patch in micrograms per hour is equal to one half of the total OME. Therefore, one half of 165 OME is 82.5. Due to the formulation of the transdermal fentanyl patches, we would use an 80 microgram per hour fentanyl patch. Finally, rule number four states that 10 to 15% of the long acting dose should be available for short acting breakthrough dosing. So 10 to 15% of 165 is 16.5 to 24.75 OME. For this example, we would choose a highly concentrated oral oxycodone solution. Again, 30 milligrams of oral morphine is equivalent to 20 milligrams of oxycodone. Therefore, the 16.5 to 24, 24 milligram range of morphine would be equal to 11 to 16.5 milligrams of oxycodone. The oxycodone suspension is available in 20 milligrams per milliliter, so we would prescribe one half to one milliliter every three hours, which would equal 10 to 50 milligrams of oxycodone every three hours. In conclusion, opioid titration and conversion are, are important skills for the gynecologic oncologist. Remember these four rules. Rule number one, Convert all opioids to 24-hour oral morphine equivalents. Rule number two, decrease 24-hour need by 25% to account for incomplete cross-tolerance when rotating opioids. Rule number three, two-thirds of your total 24-hour OME should be long-acting opioids. And rule number four, 10 to 15% of your long-acting dose will be your short-acting dose given every three hours on an as-needed basis. By applying these rules in combination with your clinical judgment, you will be able to titrate, convert, and rotate opioids for your patients.